Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we will summarize the steps that we did. Uh, I hope that they were clear. The summary will present uh, the general steps that we use in any finite element method that were demonstrated in the previous videos. Then following this video, we will demonstrate, uh, uh, or sorry, we will present examples uh, on the problem that we already handled uh, in the previous videos. Uh, to summarize the finite element procedure, the first step is create the grid. Uh, creating the grid uh, involves dividing the domain into elements and nodes. The nodes connect elements. Each element uh, has uh, its boundaries. Uh, uh, we uh, haven't really spent any time uh, in how to generate a grid. This is not the focus of this problem. I would really uh, advise you, if you are interested in generating the grid, to uh, look into uh, books that are specialized in grid generation. Mostly, we'll be talking about computation fluid dynamics problem. These people are the best in generating grids of different kinds. Uh, and we use them in finite element problems of different problems, uh, not just fluid uh, problems. Uh, fluid, uh, thermal, electromagnetic, and everything. Uh, but uh, you will find the people working with computational fluid dynamics are the best in describing how to create a grid. The second step is to uh, select the interpolation function or the order of the element. Uh, finding out uh, uh, how to uh, generate uh, the, uh, uh, the interpolation function uh, is only bounded by the admissibility conditions of the problem. The admissibility conditions uh, were introduced uh, when talking about the weighted residual mass. Uh, anything above the admissible or anything that contains the admissibility conditions and further uh, can be used uh, to interpolate uh, the function inside the element. <clears throat> then, we defined uh, the element matrices. Actually, it's done by calculation. Uh, the calculations involve the integration uh, that's generated by the Galerkin method. Following that, we assemble the elements of the different matrices. Uh, uh, sorry, assemble the uh, matrix that describes the whole domain uh, through adding up the element matrices. This uh, step, uh, as we have seen before, involves the, uh, uh, the matrices generated for each element, as well as the external loads or the external fields applied on the domain. The following step uh, after that would be applying the boundary conditions. Every problem has a boundary condition. Even if it's not explicit in the problem, there are boundary conditions that need to be uh, satisfied. For static problems, as, you have, as we have seen, if the boundary conditions are not applied, the system matrix will be singular and cannot be solved, cannot be inverted to solve the problem. The sixth step will be solving for the primary variables. The primary values are the unknown values of the function at the nodes. This uh, primary set of equations or the uh, set of equations that is generated when we apply the boundary conditions on the assembled matrix of the domain. The last step is, uh, the, if needed, we will evaluate the secondary variables. In many problems, actually, we will need to uh, evaluate the secondary variables. That's why the secondary set of equations is usually quite important. But in some special problems, these are not really of any interest, so we just ignore the secondary variables and the secondary equations. In this video, we uh, summarize the everything about finite element analysis. Actually, in these seven steps, everything I know about finite element analysis, everything that, have I, uh, that I have used in the past 30 years of working with finite element analysis, is summarized in just seven simple steps. Each of them involves a lot of work. We have demonstrated them in one-dimensional problem. 
In the following videos, we will be talking, we will be presenting uh, examples. Uh, the examples will use the elements generated in the um, finite elements uh, model we described for a bar. Uh, the same procedure is doable for every other problem in finite element data. I would encourage you very much to watch those examples in order to again to uh, get together using one language uh, and uh, using the same expressions to understand how we do things together. Uh, by the end of these examples we will start looking at programming. Uh, how to generate a program or how to write a program to solve uh, sim these simple problems. And then we will kick off uh, from that point into a very wide area or a very uh, long